Podcasting. Good morning, Mega Podlings. It's Crazy Joe. It is a Friday evening, early evening. I am at the Water Tower Cinema, and we are going to check out The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, a.k.a. The Conjuring Part 3. This is a movie I'm pretty excited about. I love the first two films in this franchise, and uh, I like most of the spinoffs they've done, too. I didn't care for two of them. I didn't care for The Nun or The Curse of La Llorona. Other than that, I've liked all the others in this franchise, so I am looking forward to this one. I'm a little worried because this movie, The Conjuring 3, is from the director of The Curse of La Llorona. So that is worrisome. But the reviews are very, very good. And we are back. Unfortunately, they still are at the three show a day uh, model. I'm hoping that's going to change very soon now that we're getting into the summer months. And uh, this is the seven o'clock show. I am a fan personally of the 10 o'clock shows or the 9.30 shows, but they're not offering those yet. So we'll take what we can get. Here we go. Conjuring 3. Let's check this out. I want to point out that I am a proud member of the Tub Club now. So we'll be filling this up. I don't even see The Conjuring up there. Trust me, it's playing. I have a ticket. It's not listed, but it's up there. Just a minute ago, there was a big line over there. Just a minute ago. It was the biggest line I've seen at the concession stand in a long time, so that's exciting. But, you know, yeah. everyone's got their stuff now, but there was actually a line at that concession stand. This is a sign, man. The movies are back. People are coming. They're lining up. They're buying popcorn and stuff. It's fantastic. Let's go check out See the Conjuring. I might be going the wrong way. It might be the other way. I didn't check which theater I'm in. I'm going to have to do that. Yep, I am definitely going the wrong way. I probably should have checked to see which theater I'm in tonight, but I didn't. There's those who wish me dead is in eight, Scoob is in 10. What's in nine? Nine is Wrath of Man. And seven is Spiral. Wow. Going all over the place today. All right. Apparently I am in Theater 8. Even though it's showing the wrong title now, this is where we're going. Theater 8. Crowds we've seen. The back row is open. The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, aka The Conjuring 3, is easily one of the most disappointing films I've seen all year. That's not to say it's a bad movie. It's not a bad movie. In fact, it's it's not bad. It's pretty good. The problem is, the quality of The Conjuring 1 and 2 were so high that The Conjuring 3 just, you go in, you can't help but go in with high expectations based on the the insane quality of how good those first two movies were. And this movie just does not measure up. 
One big change, as I mentioned going into the theater, is that there has been a change in director. This film was directed by Michael Chavez, who directed the incredibly disappointing The Curse of La Llorona, which many consider to be the worst in this Conjuring franchise. I personally disagree. I didn't like The Curse of La Llorona, but it was better than The Nun. The Nun had, like, no story whatsoever. It just was... It just, it, it was a creature. They they had a creature. That was it. They had a creature. They had this creature worked well in The Conjuring 2. Build a movie around it, but there was really no story. Uh, <laughs> so the nun just is the pits. Uh, La Llorona, not much better, but moderately better than the nun. But the fact that the director of La Llorona, which whether you think it's the worst or the second worst, everyone agrees it's one of the bottom films in this franchise that that director is the director who's going to give us The Conjuring 3 immediately made me go, ooh, really? That guy? Can't we get can we get someone who made one of the Annabelle movies? They were much better. But no, that's what we got. And I was actually uh, encouraged by the positive reviews. The, the early reviews have been extremely positive for Conjuring 3. But I'll tell you, the movie is just kind of lackluster. It's the only one of the Conjuring films that falls under the the three-star threshold for me. You know, for me, a solid rating for a good movie is three stars. I mean, you know, you get more than that, you're an excellent film. But but the, a, a, a good, solid rating is three stars. This one I gave two and a half. Like, it actually falls short of that good rating for me. Which isn't to say it's terrible. This is not like a bomb. This is not a train wreck. This isn't something to be embarrassed about. This is not the curse of La Llorona or the nun. That is uh, for sure. I think part of the problem with this film is it's not the film they sold us. If you watch the trailers, it's not the film that they advertised. Which in and of itself is not necessarily a bad thing. You can't judge a movie based on what you expected it to be. You have to judge a movie based on what they gave you. Is what they gave you good? If what they gave you is good, that's all you can ask for. You, it, you can't say, well, it's, it's not what I thought it was going to be. That's not really a valid criticism. For example, several years ago, there was a person who went to see the movie Drive. And they sued the producers because they thought it was going to be an action film like Fast and the Furious. Well, come on. Drive was an incredible movie. I mean, you got to judge the movie on, is it good? And Drive was very good. So this movie, ultimately, I am I do feel like they kind of sold us one kind of movie, and it's not what they gave us. But that isn't a, a killer in and of itself. This movie was promoted very heavily as uh, like a court drama about a man who... Uh, is he kills someone and he pleads that uh he, he was demonic possession the, the devil made him do it it's the title of the movie the devil made me do it so all the trailers indicate that we're kind of going for like a court case kind of movie and uh this, this guy possessed by the devil that's his defense and i gotta tell you the court case plays a very small role in this movie it's a tiny role in this movie i don't want to give spoilers away but you would be amazed at how little of that is in the film. To you, uh, you know, is this a spoiler? I don't know. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. If you're worried about spoilers, you know, tune out now. I don't even know that this is a spoiler, but the court case isn't even really featured in here. It's really not in the film. It's alluded to. There's, there's, you know, meetings with lawyers, but but you're not going to see any kind of scenes. Uh, that take place uh, with our with our characters, the Warrens taking the stand. You're not going to see any of that. If you think you're going to get that, and you, you'd be forgiven for thinking you're going to get that, because that is what the trailer and the title indicate. It's not in this film. Instead, it's basically Lorraine and Ed Warren on a witch hunt. Someone has been cursed, and they're like looking for the witch who put the curse on them. It's it's a it's a very human villain this time whereas in the other movies we're talking of haunted house movies this is a movie that has a human villain who is cursing someone and we're trying to find who it's a who done it who is the one 
putting this curse out there. Can they find the person? Can they break the curse? It's that kind of a movie, which is not really what I think we get from any of the trailers. So again, like I said, the question is, is the movie good in and of its own merits, not what you thought it was going to be? And well, this movie's kind of dull. It's kind of dull, kind of draggy. It, it doesn't have the heart the first two movies had. And let's Let's be very clear here. The first two Conjuring movies were special. They're special movies because they have so much heart. Uh, and that heart really comes from the relationship between Ed and Lorraine Warren. And that continues to be the strong point here. Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga as Ed and Lorraine are... The, they're the MVPs of this movie. They, they're the ones that keep you watching. They're the ones that keep you interested without them they've got nothing here so i it's like i always say with a christopher reeve superman movie people always are like oh superman for the quest for peace is garbage and i'm like well it's not good but you do have another incredibly sincere performance by christopher reeve as superman and anytime you're watching christopher reeve as superman he he never brings anything less than his a game even when the script lets him down he doesn't let you down and this is another case like that where these guys, much like Christopher Reeve and Superman 4, they still bring their A-game. And they make this movie worthwhile to the extent that it is worthwhile. So anyway, I give uh, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, two and a half stars. Like I said, this is not a train wreck of a film. This is not an embarrassment of a film. But it is definitely the weakest of the three uh, central conjuring films and it's you know it's it's stronger than some of the weaker entries in the extended conjuring universe like la llorona the nun and uh, maybe even the first annabelle film which is you know hit or miss there that's a movie the first annabelle movie is a movie that starts out pretty weak but gets much stronger as the film progresses but this is not even as strong as like the second two Annabelle films, Annabelle Creation and Annabelle Comes Home, which are really good, by the way. Those are really good. And the third one, Annabelle Comes Home, has Ed and Lorraine in it. And that's, again, Ed and Lorraine. If they're in your movie, you're you're not at a total loss because the, the relationship between those two really drives these films. So, Devil Maybe Do It, it's worth watching. If you're a fan of this franchise, it's worth watching. But keep your expectations low. Know that you're walking into one of the weaker films in this franchise. I haven't heard anyone say otherwise. You know, the film is all subjective. Film is all subjective. There may be someone who this is their favorite film in the Conjuring franchise. And that's fair. I don't want to discount that person's opinion in any way. If it worked for you, excellent. But that seems to be a very minority opinion. <laughs> From what I'm reading, everyone kind of agrees. This is the weakest of the three with the Conjuring films. So expect that going in, and you might not be too disappointed. That's all I got for you today. Conjuring Devil made me do it. Now playing in theaters and also playing on HBO Max. I say see it in theaters. Support your local theater. And come on, it's always better seeing these things in the movies. It's... It's just better. It's just better. You know, at home, you got the kids making noise. You got your pets at your feet begging for your popcorn. You know, it's like too many distractions. You go to a theater, get lost in the film. That's what you want. And uh, that's what I recommend. I hope we get a Conjuring 4. I really do. I hope we get a Conjuring 4 because Ed and Lorraine Warren, played by uh, Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga, I want more of them. I just want them in a better story next time. Keep wearing those pajamas. Keep wearing those pajamas. With the plastic feet. Keep wearing those pajamas. Tell everyone what you need. Keep wearing those pajamas. With the back door flap. Keep wearing those pajamas. Don't open it to trap. It's a trap. Some people call them bitches. Some people call them jammies. They can come embroidered with big money and no whammies. They can have a hundred tiny commander and damas. But no matter how they look, just keep on wearing those pajamas. Keep on wearing those pajamas. Keep wearing those pajamas. And now we're having fun. Keep wearing those pajamas. And now the song is done.